I mean, it's going to be awesome watching Clayton Kershaw pitch regardless and putting on the Dodger uniform, opening up this 15th season with the team. But he has looked as good as he's looked in recent memory. Another payoff. Another strikeout. That is 10 for Kershaw. 11. 11. Celestino can't lay off. He's dismantling the Twins. He is perfect through six innings. He's got a dozen. What a day for Clayton Kershaw. And of course, the question starts to become, how long do you let him go if you're Dave Roberts? I'm as big a fan as anyone and a fan of Clayton and to see a, a battery of him in Austin throw a perfect game or a no hitter, I'm all in. I got to decide to what end. Clayton Kershaw back to the mound where he's gone 18 up, 18 down. Curve gets him swinging. You know, one of the reasons that, that Kirsch came back to the Dodgers and wants it is to get that World Series. And nothing is going to be won on a Wednesday in April in Minnesota. Nothing. Up the middle. What a play! Oh, there's the play! It's from Gavin Lux! Oh my goodness. Seven perfect innings from Clayton Kershaw. With 13 strikeouts, and Dave Roberts makes maybe the hardest decision of his managerial career here. Every decision I make is for the best interest of the player, uh, their health, and the ball club. There's a lot of people that, you know, are cheering for the Dodgers, not only just for today and Clayton to throw a no hitter, but for the Dodgers to win the World Series. Kershaw, through seven perfect innings, is going to hand it off to the bullpen. But at the end of the day, those are those are individual things. Those are those are selfish goals, and we're trying to win, you know. And um, that's that's really all we're here for. Sure, I would have loved to have do it, but bigger things, man. Bigger things. Uh-huh. One more each. One more each. Uh, we're into the season, but the home opener, different. It's, uh, it's a night home opener, but uh, it's still our first game uh, this year at Dodger Stadium. So some people, uh, it's 25 opening day. Some it's their first, and it's just the newness of opening day. So that's something that always excites me and the players as well. Let's hit! Good job, guys. Happy opening day. Thank you. As a Dodger now, yeah. it's happening. Are yeah. you ready for today? Uh, I'm ready. Um, you know, every opening day is special, but usually I only have like my wife and my dad might fly in, but tonight I got grandpa, dad, aunt, uncles, cousins. I got them all coming tonight. Oh, Freddie Freeman. Knock. Ever since COVID happened and, and all that with my grandma passing away, my family hasn't been able to get together as much. So me coming home, it's getting them together. So that's what I care about the most. This is awesome, man. Opening day? Opening night. Opening night when you're at home like this, great. I haven't been a part of that opening night. It's always been opening day. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You think we're gonna have a flyover tonight? I don't think so. I, I 15, do. 7, 10, 6, 45. I got a flyover. This is where it's happening right here. How's it going? All good? It's all good. Yes, yes. I haven't been here in a million years. This is a place to be tonight. No, it's my, my first opening day. Awesome. Love it. Can you catch? All right, one more. I'm gonna throw you a knuckler. Yeah, keep it, okay, good. One more. Yes, yeah, sir. Before the Dodgers home opener, third base coach Dino Ebel enjoys the fans as much as they enjoy him. Feeling the same vibe on the field and around the dugout 
is Clayton Kershaw, fresh off a perfect seven-inning performance the day before. Good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> I'd like to think that we're all fans of baseball. I know I am. And so fans want to see great moments. I absolutely understand that. But I can't manage a ball club and players with, a, with my fan cap on. Uh, shoot, I get it. We're all fans and we want to see great players do great things. Um, but there's a cost to everything and I wasn't willing, Clayton wasn't willing to take on that cost. What he said yesterday um, really set the tone uh, for the 2022 Dodgers, that he's here to win and uh, anything other than that would be selfish. And so um, when you're talking about a person who's done everything in the game, for him to say that, that resonates in our clubhouse. You think 25-year-old Clayton Kershaw reacts to that differently? Absolutely. Um, Dave, 25-year-old Dave Roberts would have, <laughs> wouldn't be in this chair, but have certainly acted uh, much differently. Yeah, absolutely. Clayton has grown uh, immensely as a ball player, as a man. His life has completely changed, and that's an easy yes. He would have acted different, yeah. And now, your 2022 Los Angeles Dodgers. Third base coach. Stadium, the 61st opening day in the greatest ballpark there is. We'll be under the lights, a rear home opener at night here at Dodger Stadium, and the first game in Dodger Blue here for Freddie Freeman. Backstage Dodgers is brought to you by Cadillac. First baseman, number five, Freddie Freeman. Here comes Freddie Freeman. And now he gets to come home and gets to do what he signed up to do, and that is play in front of his friends and his family. Sweet full of them tonight. He goes after the first pitch and rips a base hit through the box. Get the ball, get the ball. <laughs> He's gonna run out of room at some point. <laughs> one on one out for Trey Turner. And for Trey, this is his first opening day in a Dodger uniform as well. Obviously acquired at the deadline last year. Swatted to right center. Freeman's going first to third. They've got him cornered just like that. One ball, two strikes on Justin Turner. 
Sessa comes home and he fights it off over India in the center. It's another two strike hit and the Dodgers strike in the first inning as Justin Turner drives home Freddie Freeman. And a chance now for Max Muncy. Pulls it sharply by India in the right field. Nakel is very deep. No chance to even think about Trey Turner. Throw goes into second. It's 2 0. On a 2 1. He hits a big bouncer left side. Farmer charges and it scoops under his glove. Muncie dashing for third. No throw. Everything coming up Dodgers here in the first inning. It's 3 0. The Dodgers start quickly with three runs in the first, but the Reds quiet the home team bats in the middle innings and manage to tie the score before Freddie Freeman looks to start something big in the eighth. Freddie Freeman, first pitch he sees at Dodger Stadium, wearing that uniform, base hit, came in to score. They've not scored since that first inning, though. Could he come up with a big swing here, leading off the eighth in a tie game? 1 0. Freeman hits one to left center field, slicing to the gap. He'll split him. A leadoff double for Freddie Freeman. Opening days are special. Home openers are really special. Hit a double late in the game in a tie game when you're back home in front of your family in a sweet, sweet memory. haven't really gotten chanted for when you just hit a double, <laughs> you know, so it's just special when 50,000 people can create a moment that you'll never forget in your lifetime now and to be able to look up and see my family jumping up and down with a lot of family members here, from aunts and uncles to my dad to my grandfather, all my kids, so that's as, this is as good as it gets, guys. Second and third one away. One run game in the eight. Smith hits a ball in the air. Deep center field. Way back there. Off the top of the wall and gone. First of the season for Will Smith and it breaks it open. 7-3 Dodgers. Deep center field. No big deal. Game over. And they win the home opener by a final of 9 3. To hear that, close to 50,000 fans chanting your name, I know it was a special moment for him. I, I think uh, it was a nice welcome home for, for Freddie, and uh, just to cap it off with a big league win was great. It's as special as it gets right there. You know, you, are, you have those feelings before coming out on the line for. You know the intros, but usually once the game starts, those feelings go away. And first game in Dodger Stadium is Dodger. It's I don't think it could have gone much better. Obviously, the 75th anniversary of Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier. And everyone in the country, in the sports world, outside of the sports world, is focused on Dodger Stadium and this man today. We have the special opportunity to meet somebody who is uh, very special uh, to me and to uh, the civil rights movement. This man right here was a ball player, wasn't quite the ball player that his father was, but knew that he could impact the world and keep his father's legacy going. And it's just calling. He does it every single day. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce David Robinson. All right. David, thank you. Gentlemen, it is a pleasure and honor to meet each and every one of you and get the opportunity to speak briefly. 
I think we all have a general sense that we're coming out of a very difficult American history. We were a nation of bigotry, discrimination, legalized segregation, but uh, in the national pastime. But the greatness of the Dodgers, that moment when we went beyond ourselves as ball players, we went beyond that and we're, we are going beyond that every day. There are people in your position, whether it's baseball or basketball or football, who are standing up and making the, the prominence, the image of fame, mean more. It was great today to get a chance to talk to a broad spectrum. To speak here to the players of the Los Angeles Dodgers and remember uh, the legacy, remember the values, and remember the responsibilities. So baseball is a great game, and it's the game you've played. It's a, it's a, it's a family game for us, but for Jackie Robinson and for America, it wasn't a game. It was an opportunity to break a bond that is psychological and real. And, and it was achieved. We need to look towards honoring the people who made all of this possible by standing up, analyzing the issues, analyzing the needs, and standing up to try to address them as the Dodgers. Hey, thank you for coming out. No, thank you. Good to see you. I appreciate you standing up, enlightening all of us. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you because I know you're going to do the right thing. Absolutely. You know? and, and so I'm you know, going to look for a winning like baseball team and, right. and some winning human beings right. on the field representing yeah. some good values. Yeah. yeah. A lot, of, a lot of accountability when you wear this jersey, you know? <laughs> a lot of responsibility. I don't think anyone really knew that, you know, David was going to be out here and that the Jackie Robinson Foundation scholars were, were going to be here as well. So that was obviously a, a, a pleasant surprise. And, you know, you hear all kinds of stories uh, about Jackie and, and what he went through and what he endured. But to hear it coming from his son, I, I think it just leaves a, a little bit bigger impact on you know all the guys who are, who are out here getting the opportunity to hear him speak. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Keep your mom Back in the clubhouse, another distinguished speaker awaits the team to share his uniquely personal perspective on the Dodgers and how the ripple effect of Jackie Robinson inspired him. I love the Yankees. I was raised to hate the Dodgers. <laughs> I hated the Dodgers because I was supposed to, because that's what you do when you're eight years old. So we would play wiffle ball. You guys are much too young. You don't even know what a transistor radio is. But we would, maybe I'm sweating so much, I'm supposed to put this on. Yeah, baby. Ah. Oh, that's out. We, we, we would get up to bat when our favorite player was up to bat. So my favorite player for the Yankees at that time was a catcher. Where's Will? Right here. You got bad fingers? <laughs> not yet. Yeah, oh, not yet. You ain't going to a five yet. So I, Elston Howard was that black player on the Yankees that I looked at because he looked like me. I was like, wait a minute, there's a guy on there that looks like me. Maybe I can do what he can do. So maybe I can make it one day. Maybe I could be a catcher, as God would have it, fate would have it. My high school career, baseball career, I was the most valuable player on my team, and I played catcher. You know, led the team in home runs and all that. I'm going to start lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. That fish was this big. <laughs> but uh, the opportunity that you all have to touch young men and women the way those guys touched me. You know, I'm sure you hear it all the time. And and you know it, know it. But I'm here to tell you, you'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I don't care how much money you make, 400, 500, I'm glad you're making that. But you'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. 
You can't take it with you. I don't care who you are. But you can leave it here. Not just the money, the memories, the joy that you give children, the love that they have, and they walk around with your jerseys on. It meant everything to me. As it probably did to a bunch of you guys growing up, it meant everything to me to just be, I can get emotional talking about it, just to be one of you guys meant everything. Those kids watch you, they make every move you make, they watch that. I wanted to walk like you guys. I wanted to eat what you ate. I wanted to play like you played, I wasn't as good. And it didn't matter what color you were. I just pray that you understand the power and authority that you all have, the influence that you have, and I know you do, but never take your gift for granted. It can be taken from you in a second. Denzel, Malcolm, thank you guys very much, and all you guys, thank you guys very much for listening and being a part of it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you from? Texas. Texas. Great. Yeah, I can feel that. <laughs> you too silly to play baseball. Yeah, I heard that my whole life. Yeah, what's your position to play? Oh, I figured, I figured, I figured. How you been? Everything cool with you? I can't complain about a thing, man. I'm blessed beyond measure, man. I don't want for anything. I want to be like you when I grow up, man. Man, just, you know, one day at a time. My aunt just passed the other day. She was 100 years old. And I said, Aunt Mary, I mean, what's the secret? What's really the... She said, Denzel, it's cliche, but it's true. Live one day. Today's Friday. Yesterday's game is gone. Tomorrow's not here yet. One day at a time. One day at a time, man. Welcome to a remarkable woman who was right there to support Jackie Robinson 75 years ago. Jackie's wife, Rachel Robinson. Rachel's accompanied by her son, David, and her granddaughter, Io. One day every April, the Dodger franchise takes center stage in the celebration of Robinson's achievement. And on this 75th anniversary of that day, the influential and notable gather for the occasion at Dodger Stadium. Thank you all for joining us on this special night. 75 years is a, is a milestone. It can be an important period for us to assess where we have gone in those 75 years. And a milestone is a time when people can more uh, easily reflect that particular history that began in 1947 is a responsibility and an honor and an opportunity that I think all of these players are increasingly aware of and looking to fulfill a role in society that's beyond that of an athlete. On the next Backstage Dodgers. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to just be back at Dodgers Stadium. An emotional series for two opposing players as they prepare to face their former teams for the first time. It's emotional for me, so um, it's, I'm just happy to be able to see all the guys. 